Hi folks, about a year ago, some friends of mine and I put together a place called the Angel City Zen Center in Los Angeles, California. It's a place for us to practice Zazen, and for all of you, if you want to come along, everybody's welcome at the Angel City Zen Center. The place has been going for about a year, but the financial side of things has been going steadily downwards. It's tough to run a place in Los Angeles, it turns out. So, the Angel City Zen Center is doing a new fundraiser, and as part of that fundraiser, they have asked me to star in a kind of internet-based TV show, talk show kind of thing as the MC, and I'm going to show you a clip of that. The show is a fundraiser, as I said, so they're doing it to try to solicit some contributions to you folks, and I hope you'll support them. Remember one thing, though. I don't get any money from the Angel City Zen Center. They don't send me a salary. None of the contributions that you give them go to me. Nothing. So when you support the Angel City Zen Center, you're supporting them but you're not supporting me. I say that because the last time we did an Angel City Zen Center fundraiser, basically they made some money, but then my income went down by about exactly as much as they made, which means I guess a lot of you thought that the money you sent to them went to me. It doesn't. So that's an awkward way of saying I really want you to support them, but I don't want you to stop supporting me because I just sent a whole bunch of money to the IRS a couple of days ago, and I need to kind of make some of that back. So thanks a lot for your support. I hope you enjoy the show. If you got some money to send to the Angel City Zen Center or to me, you can do that. If you don't, just enjoy what you see. There's links below so you can watch the whole show, whether you pay for it or not. Uh, have fun and take it away, Angel City Zen Center. About all these intro books to Buddhism, because I was like, well, you have to have a foundation. And then, and then I had this one, which I got with a, well, the, the, the Bodhidharma. Uh, yeah. And uh, I just started reading the book and everything. Mm -hmm. and what, I don't, uh, what was the part about attaining, right? Oh, okay, okay. If you attain anything at all, it's conditional, it's karmic. It results in retribution. It turns the wheel. And as long as you're subject to birth and death, you'll never attain enlightenment. To attain enlightenment, you have to see your nature. Unless you see your nature, all this talk about cause and effect is nonsense. Buddhas don't practice nonsense. A Buddha is free of karma, free of cause and effect. To say he attains anything at all is to slander a Buddha. What could he possibly attain? And then, like, after I read that, it was like, it was like, it was like, because uh, it was, I've been trying my whole life, like trying yeah, to attain something, yeah. to attain something, to attain some kind of the way people look at me, the way I feel, I kept trying to cheer myself up. Like you yeah. have such a cheer yourself up call. I kept thinking, oh, because that's what people say, oh, go eat this, go out to eat if you feel sad, go do this if you feel yeah. sad, go do this, buy go, something, buy yeah. something, do this. And you just realize how loud it is. It is such a, it's like a Metallica concert of wants and of, needs yeah, yeah. in your mind. Yeah. And it's just roaring. And I can, I can look at people and I can tell there's no reaching them because the Metallica concert of wants and needs is so loud. Yeah. And they are so busy being, I'm interacting with that loudness, yeah. interacting with that audience of wants and needs that, and playing to them. And, and, and playing off of it. And it's so loud. There's no way. But the thing is, you have to put in an effort to make that. It, you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the you're things. You're doing it the whole time. I think most people don't even get to that point where they notice that. But yeah. So it's so loud. And it was weird because after these things happened, I started to think, like, was I like this the whole time? Mm. Was I actually there the whole time and not noticing how loud everything yeah. was? And like kind of uh, motivating me to like just keep wanting to attain things and like cheer myself up all the time. And like, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's really interesting. So I, I'm, I'm just curious what, 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 why Buddhism? And, and the reason I ask is because I, I don't know how I'd answer that question myself. Well, I mean like, okay, so I read all the Heidegger and Sartre and Nietzsche things. Right. I, I did it. Yeah. I did exactly what a white guy should does whatever you know yeah, yeah. of his culture and um but like when you read heidegger's metaphysics um it's just like this like this, this 15 page thing mm -hmm. and he explains to you how the world is silent you know it's silent and then you write on it all the time interesting i've Wait, never read heidegger so so that's what he's and that's i mean that's and that's what a lot of buddhists say they'll say like yeah, you're projecting similar. upon everything its meaning 
which is the same thing as being like the, the world is silence and you're writing on it mm -hmm. all the time. And the metaphysics is you writing on it. But then, he, then the story ends and he doesn't say anything like else. He doesn't say like, yeah, yeah. go get a cup of coffee, yeah, yeah, yeah. meditate, go take a walk look at your wife and be like, you know what, you're the most beautiful person in the world and do that every day. He doesn't do any of those things. Yeah, like yeah. there isn't one consequence to thinking all those thoughts mm -hmm. that lead to like practicalness. No, it's really interesting because my, my Zen teacher, Nishimuro, she was really, he was interested in the existentialists. I remember going over to his, his apartment and he'd have Heidegger and he'd have uh, uh, Nietzsche, the two people you just mentioned, uh, he'd had their books and he was real interested. His his belief was that the existentialists were almost getting to what the Easterners call Buddhism, because he thought Buddhism didn't really depend on you know the historical Buddha and all of that. It was just it was a it was a kind of truth that we just call Buddhism. And but he he thought the one thing they lacked was a practice. You know the thing that they lacked was something to put all of this true understanding of things into any sort of practical application, I suppose. They didn't no, have a meditation they practice. They would do anything. things. Heidegger became a fascist, and mm. uh, Nietzsche created something called an Ubermensch, which was some kind of romantic ideal, and Sartre became, he was a commie. <laughs> and so their thing, back in the 20th century, their conclusion was always societal. Yeah, yeah, that, that that seems to be kind of a theme that keeps coming up when I'm addressing Buddhism. Because I think one of the things that's going wrong in Buddhism in the West is that they're trying to turn it into kind of a, a version of Christianity, of, of trying to introduce things like uh, charity and stuff. And it's not like charity is a bad thing or helping the homeless is a bad thing or, you know, I think people should do that. And if you, if you want to do that as a Buddhist, it's fine. But I think I think a lot of that is starting to take away from... What, what we're really trying to get at at Buddhism, which is much harder to define, <laughs> you know. In fact, if you, you know, as I'm saying this, I'm realizing, oh, well, what do you really want to get to at Buddhism? I'm kind of, I kind of go, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, so it's easy if you make it like, well, Buddhism's about helping the homeless. And you go, okay, then you can kind of... If you're, if you're Buddhist, there's, there's no difference between the homeless person and the rich person. Yeah. Like, if you think homeless people are bad, they're having a bad time. Yeah. You have to assume rich people are having a bad time. And they yeah. both need your help. So if you, if you give, if you're spending two hours with a poor person, you need to spend two hours with a rich person. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And that's, and that's the idea. I think, I think as a materialistic society, we kind of go, okay, well, these people don't have any money, so they must be miserable. So let's go help them. But of course, the people who have money are also miserable. And, and there's a kind of a general, the people who don't have money might be happier. You don't know. Individual cases, it varies. You know, you don't know.